in the name of the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Amen. There are parts of our liturgy that I know by heart, the traditional benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you, the words of institution in the night in which he was betrayed, they are words that are etched in my mind, written in my heart. They are spoken, not read. As are the words of the Lord's Prayer. I don't have to look at the words to remember the prayer. The words which, by the way, are given by Jesus to his disciples in the missing verses of Matthew chapter 6 that uh, we read tonight. But you know what I have discovered? in this time in which we are worshiping away from one another, I have discovered just how much I need all of you. I need the community to pray the Lord's Prayer. This prayer that I have prayed in the tens of thousands of times, and yet here in this sanctuary trying to lead you in it Sunday after Sunday, I find that I stumble and I find myself looking at the words in my binder, the words to the Lord's Prayer. I mean, I know this prayer. And I think to myself, come on, you know this, you can do this. And of course, I do know it, but when we're together in this sanctuary, we say it together as one voice. We hold one another up in it. We carry one another. Before I say the next word, someone else has started it. If I take a breath, someone else is picking up the rhythm. It's not an I-spoken part of the service. And so I stumble in the midst of it because the community aspect is missing. You aren't all here. We do have a few people here every Sunday, but I am miked and cannot hear their voices over my own. So I am reminded weekly just how much our faith is a we proposition. Like our confession that we will make tonight, the things we confess are not our individual failings. They are the brokenness that we share as human beings. We are preoccupied with ourselves. We forget all those whose lives have come before us or have as yet to come. We forget that we are a we and we try to rely on ourselves. We become shaped and bound by systems that often place one group against another. We confess our mutual brokenness together. Partly, our communal confession helps us to remember that our sin is greater than our individual ability to fix it. And partly, it helps us remember that it takes a community to mend what is broken. If we stood alone before God, how could we stand? If we carried alone the burden of our waywardness, how could we stand? If we faced our sorrow or our death without the support of a community, how could we stand? As I thought about this and thought about how we often say we stand alone before God, except of course for God in Christ, or that we die alone, I thought, well, no, that is not true. We are, as we will hear Jesus is, in the wilderness ministered to by angels. We are knit together into that communion of saints that I believe greets us at death's door. Tonight, we remember that we are human. And to be human is to know we are bound together. We all share the same origin and the same destiny. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Most years we say these words as we mark a cross of ashes on our foreheads as a reminder that we are finite beings. 
But like me, you probably feel like you really don't need a reminder of what we've pretty much been reminded of on a daily basis for almost a year. This year, our mortality has ever been before us as we feared what COVID might do to us or loved ones, as we watch bodies and then coffins pile up in Italy and New York, and bodies go unclaimed and laid to rest in paupers' fields. The grief of death compounded by the grief of separation. 485,000 dead in this country alone, 2.1 million worldwide. The magnitude so great we can barely comprehend. I keep thinking we should put 485,000 flags in our churchyard. I might even do it if the ground weren't frozen. So this year, I'm not sure we need these words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, in order to remember our mortality. But I do think we need to hear them, to remember that we are in this together to remember the communal nature of what it means to be human. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We are communal creatures bound to this earth, earth creatures that God breathes into the breath of life. We are in communion with the earth and all her creatures with one another and with God. Remember that you are dust. Think about it. Is dust ever found just one piece by itself? No, dust is a communion of particles. Just think when you have seen the sunlight pour through the dust you just stirred up in your room. It is more a cloud, like a cloud of witnesses, like a communion of saints swirling around us unseen but there none the less. Remember that you together are dust, and to dust you all shall return. We are in this together, bound together in life and in death. We come together this night to remember that, to remember that as much as we might feel high and mighty or we might feel lowly and unimportant, we are all marked and blessed the same with a cross of death that is replaced with a cross of resurrection. Jan Richardson puts it more beautifully than I. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked, not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. We are rooted in a boundless God, creatures of soil and star. We are created in, with, and for the beloved community of God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>